And while it's getting a lot of national attention now, the Green New Deal was originally the idea of Green Party candidate Howie Hawkins when he ran for governor in New York in 2010. Hawkins, who also ran for governor in 2014 and 2018, believes his Green New Deal plan is what's needed to successfully combat climate change. Hawkins has now been recruited to run as the Green Party's presidential candidate in 2020. And during his stop at SUNY Plattsburgh just before Thanksgiving, he talked about his party's signature Green New Deal proposal. Our plan was tax to rich to fund the public sector and a massive investment in clean energy could we face this climate crisis. Here a decade later, the carbon budget science hasn't changed. If anything, is more uh, dire, which means we've got to draw more carbon out of the atmosphere in the course of doing this Green New Deal. And Howie Hawkins joins us now. Welcome, it's nice to see you. It's good to be here. Many voters here in the North Country certainly know your name. You've been on the ballot running for governor 2010, 2014, and just again in, in 2018. So now after running for governor three times in New York, you're running for president. Why, why have you decided to run for president? Well, I was drafted. Uh, a lot of Greens from all across the country uh, urged me to run, and I looked around who else was running, and I didn't see anybody really could pull off a national campaign. So they convinced me to run. And uh, same kind of issues I was running for when I ran for governor in New York. Um, and we're just taking it to the federal level. So I'm running because a bunch of people asked me. That's really the, the bottom line reason. And, uh, you know, I think we need the Greens in this election to raise issues the major parties aren't raising. Real solutions to problems that they're not, they haven't been solving. Do you have any challengers, anyone else seeking the Green Party nomination? Yeah, there are half a dozen, but frankly, they can't pull together, you know, the requirements are very, to be recognized by the National Party. Mm -hmm. You got to raise $5,000, get 100 Greens to say you should run, do a website, put your FEC forms in, and fill out a questionnaire. And only one other has done that. So I, I don't think they're real campaigns. I mean, they're not scaled to even run for a town council seat. So... Um, the, the other guy, you know, he's got some support, so I'm not taking anything for granted, but, you know, my campaign's a much larger scale than any of the others. So as you run now, what are your priorities? What, what are the biggest issues for you? Well, I talk about three life and death issues. One is the climate emergency. Mm -hmm. Second is inequality, which has been growing for 40, 45 years. And inequality kills. We now have a 20-year life expectancy gap between our richest and poorest counties. And then we have this new nuclear arms race, which none of the candidates in the major parties are talking about. But we've got out of the arms control treaties. We're modernizing our strategic nukes. We're putting more tactical nukes into conventional forces. So uh, those are the three issues that I'm, I'm putting forward alternatives to what the major parties are doing. For you, uh, you've always talked about the need to have a party for the working person. And that's still important to you, that, that, that the working people need to be represented. Yeah, and, and if the Green Party is going to become a major party, that's who is our base is. Uh, working people vote in lower numbers because a lot of them, people say they're apathetic. No, they're alienated. They don't like either party. They don't think either party knows what their problems are, talks to them, uh, represents them. So uh, that's where we've got to build the base of this party because working, you know, we like to say the boss has got two parties. We need one of our own. We hear from the progressive candidates who are running among the Democrats, Bernie Sanders and also Elizabeth Warren. We hear talk of Medicare for all. We hear talk of $15 an hour minimum wage across this nation. And we talk about the Green New Deal. When you hear this coming from those candidates, you must think, whoa, I've been talking about this for years. And that's why we need the Green Party out there. One of the historic roles of third parties in this country is to put issues on the table that the major parties have ignored. Going back to the Liberty Party, started right here in New York against slavery. And you can go through the populist movement, the socialist movement, and now the green movement. And the problem is when the Democrats take our demands, they water them down. The Green New Deal, I was the first candidate in this country to call for a Green New Deal when I ran for governor in 2010. And the non-binding resolution for a Green New Deal, which has been introduced into Congress, really dilutes what we've been talking about. They extend the deadline from 2030 to 2050 mm -hmm. to zero out greenhouse gas emissions. They drop the ban on fracking and new fossil fuel infrastructure. 
And if we build out new infrastructure, we're locked into burning fossil fuels for another three, four, five decades, and that'll cook the planet. We talked about paying for the Green New Deal with steep military spending cuts. None of them are talking about that except Bernie Sanders, but with pretty vaguely. Um, and we talked about phasing out nuclear power, and they dropped that. Um, so that's why the Green Party still needs to be out there. And I'm putting forward an eco-socialist Green New Deal. What we need to do, given where we're at with the climate budget that the climate scientists say we need to meet to have any chance of avoiding runaway climate, uh, global warming and a climate catastrophe, is we got to do what we did during the World War II emergency. Federal government took over or built a quarter of manufacturing capacity during World War II in order to turn industry on a dime into what they called the arsenal of democracy to defeat the Axis powers. And we need to do nothing less at the federal level to defeat climate change. So I'm talking about a public energy system, a public transportation system, particularly rails, and the whole system electrified, and uh, building a new manufacturing system. Because if we're going to zero out greenhouse gas emissions, producing energy only counts for 28% of the carbon footprint. The other 72% is buildings, uh, transportation, agriculture, and manufacturing. So we need to build a whole new manufacturing infrastructure that is zero emissions and zero waste. And that requires federal action like we did during World War II to build this stuff out on the time frame we're talking about, 10 years. So the Democrats' version doesn't go nearly that far. No, obviously. the only one that's half serious is Bernie Sanders. He talks about a public energy system. He has $16.3 trillion of public investment over 10 years. The others are one to five trillion and it's all tax incentives and subsidies. Bernie does some through the public sector. The uh, budget for the Eco-Socialist Green New Deal we came up with is 27 trillion over 10 years. And we went through every sector and figured out what it would cost. It's on my website, howiehawkins.us. Look for the budget for an Eco-Socialist Green New Deal. And we show our homework. I mean, we show how we got those numbers. We look at Sanders' proposal, we think his numbers are good because he's on a slower time scale, so his 16 trillion makes sense. The other Democrats don't have serious proposals. So um, that's one thing, being the original Green New Dealer, I hope I got an angle to get into the debate and talk about what we really need to do to address this climate emergency. When you talk about Bernie Sanders, a progressive, a socialist, you like a lot of his ideas, but do you differ? from Bernie on, on certain key issues, and is that why you're running and not just supporting Bernie? Yeah, I, I, most, for most issues, we're on the same page. He's going slower than we would on the Green New Deal. My problem is he went into the Democratic Party after being an independent socialist his whole life. And when the socialists and the left go into the Democratic Party, they get lost in the sauce. Votes for a Democrat, you don't know whether it's a Sanders socialist or a Clinton corporatist the left disappears. And in order to get our ideas out into the discussion, we got to have our own identity and our own voice. And while Bernie can do that during the primary, if he doesn't win, he's going to back like he did last time, somebody like Hillary Clinton. And so his whole program won't be discussed in the general election. Another example I, I like to talk about is 2014. Um, Zephyr Teachout ran against Cuomo and surprised everybody. She got nearly 200,000 votes. And, but then, in the end, she endorsed Cuomo. I ran, I got 200,000 votes. It was 5% of the vote. And Cuomo, at that point, he couldn't take us for granted. He had to look, what were we talking about? We were talking about a ban on fracking, paid family leave, $15 minimum wage, and tuition-free public college. And he moved on all those issues. Not as fast or as far as we would like, but we, we got leverage out of that vote. And that's because we didn't disappear in the general election. So my problem with uh, Bernie Sanders is he's committed to the Democratic Party which is, you know, just take the energy issue. They just recommitted again to uh, taking money from the fossil fuel industry and called for what they call the all of the above energy policy, which means fracking the hell out of the country for fossil fuels and subsidizing nuclear power. That's not where we need to be going. How are you going to be able to compete with parties that have millions of dollars? approaching billions of dollar campaigns. Yeah, it'll be over a billion. It'll be, I think the last one was five billion between the two parties. Um, and we're hoping to raise two or three million. And most of that's gonna go into ballot access because this country has some of the most, probably the most difficult ballot access laws of any electoral democracy in the world. Uh, you wanna run for Congress in New York, you need 3,500 signatures, which really means 7,000. 
In New Zealand, it's two signatures to run for their parliament. In the United Kingdom, it's 10 signatures. In Canada, it's 100 signatures. We're just off the charts. So my campaign is more about getting ballot lines for the Greens, and then if we get enough votes in the election, in most of the states, we'll have a ballot line going forward. And then we can run local candidates to get elected to local office. There are over half a million offices in this country. We can win a lot of those. I'm saying we should be winning thousands as we go into the 2020s and in state legislatures and then and in Congress. We get a Green Caucus in Congress, then when somebody runs for president, they won't be able to ignore us. So laying the groundwork. So this is a party building exercise as much as anything else, yeah.